so the treasures that lie in places that you can't get to, you can't see. The things people have kicking around. Look at this beauty. G-Wagon, three liter, GD, five cylinder diesel with a turbo. So someone's upgraded with a turbo at some point and we're just gonna take this for a little drive and we'll do a walk around video of, uh, of the whole car. Don't think it's the original paint because I don't think they ever did it in, in this color. Let me know in the comments though if they have done this color because I, I think this is an aftermarket color because I've got a feeling this could have been red to start off with, but I'm, I might be wrong. I've been wrong before, <laughs> but it is super, super clean. We're gonna take it for a little drive and we'll show you every, every bit about the car. First start, cold start in the morning. First turn of the key. Absolutely mint this thing. for a little drive and then we'll go do some uh, a walk around video and show you all about this car just to keep us going sponsored by rain energy drink we're off off in the g-wagon yeah okay so just the first drive first drive of the g-wagon i thought this little steering wheel which i thought i think was aftermarket i thought it'd be too small to be honest fine it feels really nice it, it is gorgeous to drive yeah. absolutely gorgeous we're taking the scenic trip. Okay. I tell you what, you feel the turbo straight away. In yeah, this. yeah. Like you literally, you know, the pickup's so much better. When I've had them before without the turbo, they're such slugs. Well, this is not at all. This is. No, uh, you can really feel it, like even on low, uh, you know, low RPM. Check a right here, Nick. Yeah, I'm surprised how well this thing drives, though. Well, after driven your ones in Bournemouth, and I thought they were a bit agricultural, this is this not is at very all. Tight. It's very tight. Yeah. Um, I mean, the torque, obviously it's a torquey engine anyway, with the turbo, you hear it coming in yeah. now. It's just very, just, just slightly, but that increase, you know, that sort of 20% increase really makes a difference, I think. Right. I can't see what that is. That is a vent, isn't it? Oh, the turning circle on this is not great, but, you know, what do you want? You can't have everything, right? No. You we'll make a YouTube star of you yet. Yes, we are. Us. We're on the way. We're on the way. Now there's the, the view of the town down wow. the Tyvee oh, River. Wow, jeez, that's amazing. Oh my God, you wouldn't want to park your car on there with dodgy Hanbury. Look at these houses, they're all on the cliff edges. Yeah, aren't they just? This thing makes like, you know, no problem with these hills whatsoever. No. Second gear, I mean, barely any revs. We're at, 1800 revs, 1500 revs, and it's just... It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. I've, I've driven up here, this is the only run I've done once on this, and it's just perfection. Yeah, God, really I mean, it really could be used as a daily driver, couldn't it? It's just so, it's just comfortable. Yeah. I mean, we're only going around the little lanes, aren't we? We're just checking the brakes, we're coming down some very steep hills. Wells, is West Wells? It is, West absolutely Wells? West Wells. Yeah, West Wells driving experience. There we go. I mean, look at this, look at it. Oh, oh here we go, we met somebody. First time today. Jesus. Well, I feel like I'm going off roading. It's bad, isn't it? I wouldn't be able to do that in a sports car. Jeez. Yeah, God. A right. nice driver. I'm really impressed with how this thing drives and the power it's got when you sort of put your foot down with the turbo. You, you've got sort of, um, I don't know, 1800, 2000 RPM. You actually get the, you know, the turbo boost kick in. It's really nice. It's really nice. Can we get onto the beach? Yeah, you can walk down, but not in this. Oh, okay. No, but see the, the way the rock is. Oh. The cauldron is on this. Whoa, that's so cool. cool. I tell you now, yeah, I used to do the Lonely Planet all around the world. Mm. And they slagged off West Wales, so it was a big dump. They always have, really? all of a sudden now, this is the best in the world. This is up there with the best walks. Beat New Zealand, this, this walk so it's preserved. Like
Right, so we're gonna show you a little bit of a, a buyer's guide for this as well, because these G-Wagons are a minefield. Um, we've had quite a few now, and can you guess what the main problem with these is? I'll give you a clue, it's not the engine. So the main issue with these is obviously rust, and rust is hidden everywhere. I mean, Marcus, Bondo. You've had cars just covered in Bondo before, right? Absolutely. And, and you can't tell when you first look at it. You can't tell how thick um, the paint is necessarily unless you use a gauge. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna go around the car and show you places that would rust if you're looking to buy one. So let's go around this car and have a look now. So, inside the inner arches and the bottom of the mounts, the chassis mounts, they always rust. These bits up there, they can be bad. Obviously, inner arches, sills, all these places are places we need to look out for for rust. This one's obviously had under seal, which is not uncommon, needs to have. Also, these bottom plates here, they can rust too. So that's something you need to look at. Fuel tank down there, but as you can see, this one, it's minty, really clean, super clean. And obviously, on the seals down there, that's another place you need to look. Another classic place these things rust is along the, yeah, on the, on, along the sort of scuffle tray here and around, around the windscreen. Any, it's perfect on here, this one. Any bubbles around here would indicate that you need to <laughs> cut it out, take the windscreen out and have it fully repaired. Not just taking the windscreen out is a, is a heck of a job. Heck of a job yeah. yeah, so the front wings. This one's had some aftermarket lights fitted. This one's got some damage that needs to be replaced. But um, they're quite nice aftermarket ones. It takes away from the originality a little bit, but still looks cool. As with the front LEDs, you know, these obviously wouldn't come from the factory, but I think they look kind of cool and I like the ring lights on them. And we see those big old front spotlights. These are bloody light up the bloody nice sky. Very cool. Interior. So it's showing 61,000 on the clock. Do you know if that's genuine or if that's yes. a genuine? Bloody hell. It's got all the service history in the box. Wow. By the chap that uh, was something to do with the Mercedes Benz always club. Mercedes Benz club, okay. And it's this five, five speed manual with the obviously low high. So I think the seats have must have been re-stitched, right? They've got to be redone. So it would have it probably would have been the material, the gut, like the grey material. But the headline, these never really have problems. I think it's just literally a piece, piece in there. I don't know, they, they do tend to last well, these. Oh, look at that entry. Okay, make it easy. One, one touch. One touch to get in, nice and easy. Even I can get in. Look at that, and enough space. And what is this? A built in torch, and the caps come off. And we think this is factory, but I mean, <laughs> is it? I don't know. Built in little light, fire extinguisher under the seat. See, this is the thing though, where it's got the little clip, it does make you wonder if it yeah. is. Yeah, and and these these are locking diffs, aren't they? Okay. I think that's the locking diffs. It's got, it will have, I think it's got a, a central locking diff or it's got a rear locking diff. Guys, um, you can't know everything about everything. It's got these buttons in here. I know it's got low, it's got high, but what are these two down here? Are these the, Lock at the rear lockers and the front lockers because I don't think it's got a central lock. So, if you guys can give me some info, let me up in the back comments. Back yeah, so, armrest. Armrest. but they, you, they, you know what, these normally break. That's another thing to look out for. These actually are adjustable. Look, they go lift up one little clip, but they normally break and they don't stay down. They like break in the center here, and obviously, you've got the button at the side, yeah, and that perfect. lifts back up again. Yeah, it works really nicely. Like I said, this is aftermarket, which you think that's not going to be big enough to turn it, but it, it turns it fine. Yeah. And you can be six foot high. Oh, yeah, it got so much head height in it. It's quite a comfortable position. 
Mm. Right, let's have a look in the boot. Another thing with these, they rust around the doors. I mean, they pretty much rust everywhere in fairness, but the bottom of the doors here, this is where you gotta check. So that looks like to me a previous repair. I would think, what do you think of that? That's a previous repair. Yeah, that's been welded there. Yeah, so that's been welded and cleaned up, but hasn't come back through in a few years, I say it's okay. So the bottom of the doors is something you've always got to check out for. These original dimples, it's the original door. Going a bit deeper, you always see a bit of stuff like this. But, sounds solid. Look at the carpets though. Perfect. And they can leak as well. So the other thing with these, you've got to check for wetness under the carpets because they can get wet because the seals aren't the best on them. You get a little bit of trouble with the seals. I think these are quite agricultural vehicles. So farmers would have had them, um, kids in the back and all this kind of thing. So when you have got a clean interior like this, it's, it's a rare thing to find. Um, oh, here we go, look. <laughs> well, saying, I didn't think it was the original steering wheel. Oh, and that we would be... We were looking at it. <laughs> and we were looking right at it. That is the original steering wheel. But what you find is they're quite a big steering wheel. So people put smaller ones on there because if you've got long legs, you know, you can uh, get your legs under more comfortably, sort of in and out. So I can see why he switched it over. But uh, obviously, it's got the original parts with it, so that's quite nice. The paintwork is really nice quality. See that there? Very good quality paintwork. So if it's been repainted, if it has been, I think it has, it's been done to a very good standard. I mean, you can't see any blemish in it whatsoever. And all the plastic's not worn on it, it really is. It really is clean. But this car will be going up for sale. So if you're liking what you see on this video, you can actually go to the website, which is www.thatsclassic.co.uk. I'll leave the uh, link in the description below. And you see the link there to the G-Wagon. And if you fancy it, give me a shout and we can have a uh, discussion about the car. And uh, UK-wide delivery available. Uh, we've got some good guys we work with for deliveries. And uh, give us a shout. Just gonna show you around the engine bay. Now this is what you don't normally see. Very clean <laughs> diesel engine bay, which would lead me to think the mileage is bloody correct. I mean, 60,000 miles for one of these is insane. There you go, rear bulkhead. So that's that. You don't normally see it like this. You can tell it's a low mileage engine, but there's just no way battery super nice 